Hello beautiful people, my name is Vendi, and if you've been on this channel for a little while then you know that in addition to reading, my great love and great passion in this world is writing. And lately, if you're counting uh, someone's investment in things based on the time that they spend doing them, in 2020 in particular, uh, another thing that we can add to that list of great loves is the playing of the game Dungeons and Dragons. Now I'm of the radical opinion that it's good to like things and that you don't need an excuse to do something that makes you happy as long as it's not doing someone else any harm. But as the pandemic wears on and motivation for things gets more and more difficult to have, I've noticed something. And that something is that this wonderful collaborative nerdy hobby that I play with my friends has actually made me a better writer along the way. I know it sounds a little silly and like I'm grasping for straws to try to find an excuse to spend so much time doing this thing, but I really have experienced changes since beginning to play this game on a more regular basis, both on a structural storycraft level and also um, on a time management, especially mid-pandemic level. And so, in the hopes of both encouraging my fellow writers out there to find a tool that perhaps helps them improve their craft, and as an excuse to convince more and more of my wonderful subscribers to join in on this really beautiful, fun game, today I'm going to be giving you my top five ways that playing D&D has made me a better writer. But before I get into those top five, I'm going to tell you a little bonus reason that works for me specifically as just external motivation. I've done a little bit of classical conditioning on myself wherein if I meet my writer goals, I reward myself not with food or a fun experience because fun experiences are hard to come by when you're just in your house all day, but with material goods, specifically with dice for the playing of Dungeons and Dragons. This is just some of my carefully cultivated collection of math rocks that I use to play D&D and that I've been using as a reward for ensuring I'm meeting my writing goals. By the number, you can probably surmise that my writing has been going very, very well. The only problem uh, with using this method of self-rewarding is that you run out of space for your dice very, very soon. <laughs> but I'm secretly a dragon at heart and cultivating this horde has provided me a wonderful light in the darkness that has been the year 2020, so I don't really mind. <laughs> okay, with that aside out of the way, let's actually get into the video. These are my top five ways that playing D&D has made me a better writer. The first major benefit that I've gained as a writer by playing D&D is learning how best to stay in character. None of the dungeon masters or other players that I play with are super strict about staying in character the whole time we're playing. We always allow for asides and funny goofs at the table. It just keeps it more interesting for us. However, I found, and so have luckily, the groups that I play with, that it's more interesting and more compelling for all of us if we try to stay in character for the duration of the story. This adherence to a way of thinking that doesn't necessarily mimic my own has actually made it a lot easier for me to find and stick with the voice of my characters while I'm writing. The more D&D you play, the more that the character that you create diverges from you, at least that's been my experience. So at this point as a seasoned player, the characters that I play are vastly different from me, both in how they think, what motivates them, etc. And because I devote so many hours per week, playing these people who just are not like me, but are still kind of me in many ways, I found it a lot easier to get into the headspace of characters that diverge vastly from my own lived experience as well. And not only that, I can more easily recognize when their choices that they're making are in line with what I, Vendi, would do, or what I, Vendi, would plot out and would like the story to look like, versus what feels organic and natural for the character that I'm writing. It's definitely a bit of an uncomfortable practice, both in writing and in D&D, but as with anything, practice definitely makes perfect. And this comfort that I've gained with basically inhabiting another person's headspace has both sped me up as a writer and I think made me a stronger creator of character. The second way that playing D&D has helped me become a better writer is because of the inherently collaborative nature of D&D. This might seem a little bit ironic considering we often think of writers as solitary creatures, geniuses who lock themselves away in ivory towers and don't come down until they've produced all by themselves from their minds, a piece of art that they are then ready to share with the masses and spread the word about. But the more I write and the more I develop my storytelling craft, the more I realize that's absolutely not the case. And therefore, practicing collaboration is an excellent, excellent strategy for taking your storytelling to the next level. Once you reach the intermediate stage of writing, you'll be working with critique partners. And if you're working toward publication, eventually you'll be working with agents and editors and a bunch of people who all have input that will eventually make your story a stronger version of itself. And while ultimately you'll be the one deciding what happens in your story, taking all of those ideas that other people give you and parsing through the ones that you prefer and the ones that you'd rather leave aside is an excellent practice that you can get into at any stage of the game. Additionally, much like how I imagine writing fan fiction would, 
uh, the collaborative nature of D&D takes a lot of the pressure off. Your dungeon master or your DM has created the world that you are working in or is using a module to uh, sort of guide you through it. So you can make certain choices about how your character interacts with and responds to the world and eventually shapes it and the plot. The bare bones of having the world laid out is not something you have to worry about on top of creating your character. Additionally, since all of the other characters are just as main character as you are, you need to respect them and their choices in moving the plot forward as well. I think this in particular will help with the creation of fleshing out side characters. Oftentimes characters that aren't the main character don't get the attention that they deserve. And just engaging with a form of storytelling that not only uh, encourages you to, but forces you to look at how other people can shape the story that you are a part of, will ensure that your side characters don't feel two dimensional or like props to build up the main character's story. They have their own motivations and goals and those will shape the plot as well. Also as like a bonus way, seeing my friends on a regular basis because this is a collaborative game um, definitely gives me a serotonin boost that carries me through the rest of the week and that serotonin boost increases my motivation and my energy to actually be able to do other things when I'm not playing D&D, such as writing. So I guess that's a bonus way. The third benefit of D&D for writers is that D&D forces you to, if you have a larger group the way I do, have a scheduled and regular commitment throughout the week or month or whatever it is that you consider a good interval to play with your group with. Again, this is another step of putting a goal into practice. It becomes a lot easier to set other routines if you already have practice doing one and you have the external motivation of other people keeping you on track for it. A game as involved as D&D is a commitment much the same way that writing is a commitment. Only your commitment with D&D is not only to yourself but also to the people that you're playing with. I've personally found that it's a lot harder for me to not do something if I feel that other people are relying on me to do it. And by that virtue, I end up scheduling things around the blocks of time that I commit to D&D. And having practice setting up that kind of routine also helps you set up something as simple as, oh, I don't know, a writing routine. Whether your routine is multiple short form sprints or one long haul, which is the tip that I will get to next. Making yourself basically be the frog in boiling water for your writing is the best way that I personally have found to keep yourself committed and sticking to a project from start to finish. As I alluded to in the previous point, the fourth way that D&D has helped me personally become a better writer is because the games are a long haul. I know that some people play full like eight hour sessions once a week and that's great for them. I do not have that kind of stamina nor do we have that sort of um, time uh, to block out all at once. I play in two active campaigns that both meet once a week and each lasts about four hours per session. Now I'm not saying that you should sit down for four hours every day and just straight up write. But I am saying that finding a way to long haul storytell in this way builds up your endurance to do it for longer the next time. When I first started playing, the four hours was quite a long haul. But the longer I play, the more I realize that I need a shorter and shorter break and I get closer and closer to being able to do the full four hours and stay committed the entire time. Now, I don't know if you know this, but writing a book takes a whole lot of time. <laughs> writing 50,000 to 100,000 words is not something that you can do in a really quick period of time. At least, not most of us. If you can, you're a unicorn, teach me your ways. But for most of us, when we sit down to write a novel, it's definitely a commitment. And if we don't build up that sort of endurance and uh, the ability to storytell for a very extended period of time, we can get burnt out at the end of Act 1, or at the end of Act 2, or somewhere between the first and fourth draft. My point that I'm trying to make here is, once you've developed the ability to do a thing for a very long period of time, something as long haul as writing a novel feels a lot more manageable. In one session, we generally focus on one thing that we need to do. And when you're writing, you're generally focusing on, I don't know, the scene or perhaps the chapter that you're trying to finish in that one time. And eventually those little scenes that you're writing become chapters and the chapters become acts and those acts eventually become a full finished draft. But if you set out thinking that writing is a sprint, not a marathon, you're gonna run out of steam very fast. In the same way that if you sit down to your first D&D game and expect to be able to go for a full eight hours, you're probably gonna fatigue very, very quickly. And the fifth way that D&D has helped me personally become a better storyteller is because ultimately it's a giant story. While my friends and I do play the occasional one shot, which is exactly what it sounds like, a short form self-contained unit of a thing that can be played in either one or two sessions, the D&D games I am most committed to and the ones that I have most fun playing are the ones that are taking a very long time. And because of the nature of my DMs and the way that they sort of build D&D games, a lot of what we're working on in one of my campaigns especially is a mystery with many varied plot threads and side characters that you need to keep all up in here or if you're smart in a notebook, 
so that you can keep track of them and see the beautiful plot holes that your DM has created for you to enjoy. And I've found that in playing not one, but several D&D games, as well as writing my own stories, I have been able to keep plot threads tied in my brain much better. I'm better at remembering the continuity of what character said what thing and how they behave and what their dynamic is like with this other character. And my ability to keep those things in my head and remember what's important later on and sort of weaving plot threads in per my choice and sometimes just because it feels right has made for way cleaner drafting. I stand by the belief that the first draft or the zero draft if you're like me and don't want to consider that the first draft. <laughs> it's just you telling yourself a story, but once you get better at telling stories, it becomes easier to make that first telling something that's, well, not good, but like definitely less crap than it would have otherwise been. <laughs> and with D&D in particular, because it's collaborative, because it's so long haul, because other people are involved, etc. for all of those reasons I mentioned previously, it's almost like you're tricking your brain into thinking, oh, that's not what you're doing. So you're getting sort of passive learning for how to story tell. What might have been super intimidating when you're sitting down at your laptop and you're looking at Microsoft Word and you see that cursor blinking and blinking and blinking, all of that potential panic and fear goes away because ultimately you're playing a game with your friends and people you trust. So getting practice that might otherwise have paralyzed you actually becomes a fun and easy thing to do and you're rewarding yourself for doing it because of that serotonin that I mentioned earlier. And if you're anything like me, it just encourages you to keep going. So writer friends, D&D friends, Keep going, keep creating beautiful stories. And writer friends, if you've never considered D&D as a tool to improve your story craft, I highly encourage you to. But now I have a D&D game to prepare for, so that's gonna be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave it a thumbs up. And if you like me, maybe consider subscribing to my channel. I post videos every weekend and I would love for you to join my little booktube family. If you play D&D, comment down below and tell me all about your character, race, class, whatever you're doing in your campaign, whatever. If it's D&D, I want to talk about it with you. <laughs> and whether or not you play D&D but you like this video a lot, please let me know down below so that I can make more D&D related content for you guys. It's a big part of my life and I would love to share more about it with you here on the internet. I feel like it's a similar sort of nerdy as being really, really into books and storytelling is. So I think that that sort of content will do just fine here on my corner of the world. But I really truly have to go. I love this campaign and I want to prepare for it. So that really is it for me. Thank you again so much for watching and I will see you with another video very, very soon. Goodbye.